Hello everyone, and welcome to another Paint With Me video. This time I wanted to do something Halloween themed. I've been really inspired by Halloween recently and just kind of sort of the cliche spooky themes. You know, like your ghosts and goblins and witches. And I thought that it would be really fun to do a bit more of a put together illustration inspired by some of those things. So I decided to draw a little witch and her cat familiar. Another thing that inspired me to do this idea was actually looking back at some old art challenges that I've done. I believe that, gosh, maybe it was 2018, I did all of Inktober. And during that time, I remember doing an illustration of a little cat and a witch and the cat wore glasses. And I was looking through some of these old pieces and I thought that it'd be fun to approach these ideas again, but with my skills now. I also thought it'd be a fun ode to all the art challenges that go on during October, while I'm not actually participating in any of them. It's been a while since I've been able to do a full one of these challenges. I think I've maybe completed Inktober back when that was the big one once, and other than that, I really haven't been able to complete a whole nother round, mostly just because it's really time consuming and unless you're just doing little sketches, I find that I have a really hard time actually completing that many pieces in one month. I honestly think it's probably pretty difficult unless you get a head start and the few times I got either close to finishing it or did finish a 30 day art challenge, I did get a head start. But that being said, I feel like I work a little slower now and I decided that I was going to work on one quality piece rather than 30 rushed ones. When it came to actually planning the piece, it kind of happened organically, which doesn't happen often. I knew I wanted to do something Halloween themed, but I also hadn't spent much time in my sketchbook, so I was spending a little bit of time sketching and doing some figure drawing, and I found a couple of cool poses and ended up liking the sketch enough that I decided I wanted to do something more with it. And that kind of led into me thinking of this idea of a witch sitting on some steps to a porch or something like that with her little cat familiar, and some pumpkins. And I will say the pose for this really challenged me, but I'm very happy with how it turned out. I spent quite a while on the sketch perfecting it and honestly taking a lot of time to study the reference photo, especially for the shoes and the angles. It was really difficult. It's just not my strong suit and because I haven't been doing as much drawing recently, I was definitely a little rusty. But that being said, if you take enough time, you can figure stuff out. And I was able to have a sketch that I was really happy with. Looking back at a lot of my artwork in the past, I think one way that I've grown, especially this year, is in tackling things that I haven't done before and also trying new and different poses. I feel like this sort of unlocked kind of a new confidence in me that I can draw more dynamic and fun characters and they don't have to be in the same static poses. And I think it might lead to me making some more interesting illustrations in the future. That's something that I've wanted for a long time and I think I finally gotten to a point where I don't have the same fear that I used to and I can tackle things and subject matter and poses or whatever it is that have scared me in the past. Now that doesn't make it easy. I definitely faced quite a few roadblocks with this one and I should probably admit that the process you're seeing now was not my first attempt. This kind of seems to be a running theme in my work, 
especially the stuff that I film, what I post and what I create almost is never my first attempt. I do think I've figured out why, and some of it does come down to maybe being rusty or not having prepared well enough, but I thought of another way to sort of think about it. Looking back to when I was a student, it was really normal, especially with writing, to have multiple drafts of a project. Whether that be a rough draft, or a first and a second and a third draft. And I realized that that's very similar with art. I feel like those different drafts can be hard to distinguish if you're doing digital work and can adjust as you go. But for traditional work, especially with mediums like watercolor, where once you put the paint down, it's down, you can't really cover it. Creating multiple paintings or attempting the same painting multiple times until you get your final draft, I think is probably not uncommon. So the mistake I made with my first one was actually probably the medium that I chose. I was trying to use acrylic inks instead of watercolor, kind of in honor of some of the materials I used in the past for October art challenges, but I hadn't used them in a while and I also hadn't painted in a long time, so I was very rusty. Now, acrylic inks are transparent like watercolors, but they dry down and don't re-wet, and the texture is also a little bit different once it dries. I'd say it almost dries a little less matte than watercolor, almost has a slight sheen. And this is fine, and I've found that I can actually use acrylic inks with watercolor, especially if I'm using it for something like line work. But between the paper that I was using not quite having the thickness that I needed. The acrylic inks just built up and got to a point where they were kind of peeling off and the piece kind of started falling apart the more I tried to make it work. And eventually I decided that I just needed to try it again but with watercolor and knowing that I would be able to do a much better job with a medium I'm more familiar with. And in between attempts, I also went back and I readjusted my sketch. I actually didn't do too much, but I did tweak the composition a little bit. Originally, the cat was in the kind of top left part of the painting, sort of by where the bush is, and it felt really imbalanced in the original. And so I played around a little bit and decided to move our little cat to the front. Also, I gave him a little hat. It's kind of supposed to be a wizard hat, but it looks a little more like a party hat. But I don't know, maybe they're heading out to a Halloween party. So who knows? It is whatever you make of it. But this attempt, I had a lot better idea of what I was doing. I knew exactly what colors I wanted to use. And while I didn't really change my idea for color palettes in between attempts, I know how my watercolors mix a lot better than my acrylic inks, so the colors came out a lot clearer and closer to what I intended them to be. I think it goes to show that knowing your medium goes a long way. I would love to use acrylic inks more and get to know them more, but I think I need to do that not on a final piece and maybe play around with them in my sketchbook before trying to tackle something like this again. Now I will say that I was really happy to be able to use some of my holy grail paints and the real star of the show was, let's, uh, let's see if I can get this right, Quinacridone Rose by Daniel Smith. It is one of my favorite paints. It's actually the color of the shoes and the hat and it's just this beautiful kind of corally pink. It just pops and it's so beautiful and it also mixes well with other colors. If you use watercolors, I highly recommend this one. 
and I feel like it's really what brought the piece together and kind of added a brightness and I don't know it's just such a good color So one other takeaway that I had was what kind of line work I wanted to use. Now normally I use colored pencil and kind of try to create a softer look with the line work, but I wanted to try something a little new today. I wanted to use fine liners. In this case, I used brown fine liners, although they do almost look black, to create a bit of a sharper line work, but I also wanted to maintain some softness. I think I was able to maintain this while also adding a bit of extra dimension and there's just something so satisfying about adding varied line weight into a piece and while I normally do that with the colored pencil, it's just so much more striking with the pen that I might actually have to try this again in a future piece because I really like how it looks, but I also really like the softness of the colored pencil. So who knows what I'll go with in the future, but it's nice to know that I have this other option that I really like. So here we have it, the final reveal. I really like how it turned out. Again, I love the line work and the colors. And I do think I was able to retain a hint of softness. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. I hope you all enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time. Happy Halloween!